All right, guys, so thanks for joining me in my uh, electric funeral for the starter. Uh, unfortunately, I put it in back in the machine and I went to turn it over. And although the motor worked, it didn't have enough juice, enough power to turn the motor. In fact, it started smoking a little bit. And I thought, well, this isn't worth having in here. You know, if it's going to be uh, an issue. Plus, I don't really need the electric start. Um, it's not really worth replacing it. They did make a model, a 2500. You notice how this has the E. And that just basically means electric start. So it's reduced now to a 2500. So where am I with it? I put the top back on, cleaned up all the bolts. Um, just two bolts here. I think it's 7 16 nut on the bottom. You take the fuel cap off. I did all that taking it apart, but I just thought I'd go over uh, that part of it. And we've painted the inside of the uh, bucket here because you have a metal plate here and this was bent a little bit here so I had to straighten it out because the other scraper bar was worn down on this side you know it had some meat on that side but this side was worn down but we did get another replacement scraper bar it's a Stens part number 780104 and uh, unfortunately it doesn't come with the bolts. There's three of them. One, two, three. And so we're waiting for those to come and they should be here tomorrow. But we've been painting here and there. I painted this inside probably about four days ago. I usually wait. That's why my videos take a while to make because I let the paint cure for a number of weeks before I start putting it back together. Because what can happen is if you start putting it back together, the parts are going to fuse to each other. And next time you take it off, it's going to tear the paint off. So you just want to make sure the paint's good. And the weather's getting colder, so it's harder to do that kind of stuff. It's harder to paint. Now, I do have a heater in here, but when you start introducing chemicals, especially flammable ones, you really got to be careful with it. So we've cleaned up the side and we did replace the wheel both wheels actually you know here's the old ones here they were kind of wobbly they were moving back and forth so uh, I keep all parts I have parts for lawnmowers wheels so those are exactly the same size and typically you'll find them on mowers that aren't self-propelled because the self-propelled ones will have gears kind of like teeth plastic teeth inside of the rim so those worked out nice. Uh, she's running good. Um, we have the plates here that I took off of the, the auger here. And I was lucky all the bolts are all good. I cleaned them all up. I'll show you the bolts here. I cleaned them all up. Typically these are rusty and they'll break. So I just took my time taking them off, cleaned them all up, oiled them so these are ready to go. And I'm going to paint this part here. I also thought this warning was quite funny. If you look at the uh, the warning label there, you see a guy with, uh, apparently he had wrenches in his hand, but he reached into the chute and now his hand and the wrenches are flying out of the chute. So I thought that was, uh, that was pretty funny. I also cleaned uh, and wire brushed down below here. This is where it's in contact with a lot of the snow. You have the axle. So I went and uh, prepped that all and gave it a good paint job, it's particularly on the welds. I like to do the welds because um, that's where you're going to have those rust out. You're going to have an issue. The welds are going to break. So I make sure I always cover the welds. So basically I have the augers out. And you always put the augers in the right side first. It's going to have this notch in here because that's where the uh, pulley is going to go. It's not hard to get out. There's three bolts on each side of it. And you just slide it out towards the left. But you'll know because it has this slot here that that goes on the uh, drive belt side. Um, other than that, these aren't horrible. I could probably replace them. You can tell because there'll be a, a little circle drilled in there and once it wears past that circle or if your hand fits in you know between this bottom part 
and the uh, paddles here that it's time to replace it. I'm going to run it this way, see how it works. If I have to replace them later, I'll do it. Uh, we have the, the chute here, which we've already started prepping. I think I mentioned it before, this is the exact same chute. It's metal <clears throat> as the 622, the 521, and a lot of Toro models have this same exact chute. The only difference is the mounting. All the bolt holes are the same. It's just there's a plastic handle type piece that you use to manually uh, turn the chute. So that's what we're working on there. And so we have a little bit more painting to do. Like I said, it's a little hard to do when it starts getting colder. So I'm kind of picking my days uh, of when I'm going to do it because I want it to turn out good. The, the bolts should be coming tomorrow for the scraper blade. Uh, we're going to put that back on. And uh, that's about where we are with it. Now, along with the Toro, I've been working on this classic Snapper SX5200. And this is a classic machine. I, ha I have a video in the works for it. I actually bought this for $30 on Marketplace probably about five months ago, four months ago. And I've been kind of pecking away at it. And there is a separate video that's coming out for this. But I just wanted to make a point that Although this machine and the Toro were competitors at the time, it was like 90, 97, 98, these machines share the exact same engine, which is a Tecumseh HS50, two cycle engine. Uh, so I would have a spare engine for this if I wanted. Uh, but I'm just making a point that when you see a brand name, doesn't mean that they make the part. Okay. So as we're waiting, we might as well look at other things that need to be done. This is probably the final thing that needs to be cleaned up. This is a chute control here, and it's basically just a manual handle on the chute that you just turn yourself. Um, there are a couple brackets here. You can see there's some rust here. Um, I've already removed the 7 16 You have a bolt here and a nut on the bottom. Same here. And you have one here, and here you have the spring mechanism right here. And what that does is this spring causes tension and it presses up against these slots in this plastic piece here. So when you're turning it, it's going to lock into place and not go flying around. So we already took the spring out, cleaned it up. All we have to do to remove this there goes one of the pieces but we're going to take that bracket that just fell off of this side and that'll allow us to remove this and we can clean it all up because you can see there's a lot of old lithium grease in here we have some rust here that's you can see it's kind of scaling off of this metal and this is an important uh, framing right here for that chute so I'm going to clean it all up we'll get the wire brush on it uh, maybe give it some paint but this is more difficult because you have to degrease it it's very greasy so it's going to take some time to degrease it before I can even paint it uh, fix it all up so I'm going to get started on that Okay, so that was a pretty rusty piece. I removed it here. We have two bolts here, uh, one on each side that hold this bracket right here in. You can see this bracket, it would go over here. Now this mechanism right here is what latches into the edges of this plastic piece, which the chute connects to. And so as you turn it, it kind of keeps it locked in the position that you uh, turned it at. So that's what that mechanism is for right here. So we've cleaned this up. You can see how nice this piece came out. Nice and clean. We got the old grease off of it. That'll eventually sit on this piece here. Once we get it all cleaned up, we're going to have to degrease it, 
we'll get all the paint off and maybe give it some fresh paint and uh, I'll have to wait for that to dry uh, and then we'll continue on. Okay, so we're moving along on this project. I'm almost done with it. A lot of things I did and I didn't put on video because it's pretty self-explanatory, but I'll explain, you know, how everything kind of fits together here. But you see, I painted the auger and uh, I watch a lot of videos on YouTube and I see a lot of people, they fix them up, but they never do the auger. They never paint the, the welds, clean the rust off of them. When I do a job, I do it 100% clean everything up because I want it to last and I have a kind of a maintenance starting point where I can you know document well this was done that was done everything's done and all I have to do now is just maintain it you know uh, you can see the augers here I've taken off the paddles and I've cleaned every single bolt now th this side here if you want to remove and uh, replace these paddles it's probably best to replace them with this auger removed and it's not that hard you just have this side here with these three bolts and you have that cup which I painted front and back that was pretty rusty but uh, what's good about this uh, machine is the bearings are located on the inside cup you know there's going to be a cup on the inside and there'll be a cup on the outside and the same as this side there's kind of like a cup on the inside and then we have the wheel here which is the pulley and if you remove that it's very easy one bolt it is a plastic one which I know on my snapper it's metal so they they made that one a little bit better that one's plastic but it's in good shape so I'm not worried about it but on this side we have like a a star I was able to use an Allen wrench on these. You remove these if you want to replace the paddles on both sides. And a lot of times you got to use a 7 16 or a 3 8 uh, crescent wrench and a ratchet combined to get these off. Um, in the middle here, you're going to have these metal spacers that are inserted into this rubber paddle. And I clean them up. And what we're working on here is the chute control and what that consists of and these were all pretty rusty and like again I see a lot of videos where they you know they replace the paddles but they don't pay any attention to how rusty the chute control is if that rusts out you're not going to have control of the chute anymore and it's going to be a mess so I've painted front and back bracket this is the main bracket here and you'll see you know if you paint it and what I did was I put I cleaned all the rust off all the surface rust it's going to be lumpy like this there's nothing you can do about it that's the pitting from the corrosion of the rust you know if this were on a car you would take Bondo and you'd smooth it out or lead or whatever you use and it would be a picture perfect finish but in this case we're concerned about protection not uh, vanity so we've got the bracket that goes first here we've painted it front and back it's clear coated two coats of uh, rusty metal primer uh, two coats of 2x black paint and then we have the clear coat and uh, then what would happen is this piece here would sit on top you see how it turns back and forth and then you would have these single brackets here, which I've also prepped and painted. And of course, 
course there would be some grease in between these two layers here you put some grease in there and this turn back and forth there's one bolt here one bolt here we have a bolt over here and a bolt over here and then uh, we also have this little kind of this lock mechanism which would go over here and that, that locks into these slots you can see it locks into these slots there's a spring that goes from that hole right there to the hole here on this little mechanism here this little lock mechanism and so it's just a manual chute and that's where this comes in where it's going to strap to the uh, chute and you kind of turn it by hand nothing fancy they do have models where they have the rod that comes in and there's a mechanism here and you turn it that's why you see these two i don't know if you can see them the two bolt holes there in the handle those would be for that mechanism now this model didn't come with that it's just a manual operation now we do have the chute here it's all painted now this one i did with a brush you're not going to get a you know as good a finish with a brush but it is a thick layer of oil based enamel and again, you're going to have the pitting. There's nothing you can do about that. It's really not important. What's important is uh, what is important is protecting the surface of it and the longevity. Uh, so that's what we've done. So I'm going to piece these together. And I do have these two brackets here. were pretty rusty too. And I've seen many videos where they're just rusted to whatever. And it's, it really does pay off to take the time to paint them up. And they're going to go here. And you have four smaller bolts that mount here. And those bolts were all cleaned up. And you have a, in the center, it's a larger bolt. So it's a total of five bolts. Um, but the center one's going to be longer. And I have the other side of it, which it kind of sandwiches... Uh, the paddles and this axle together so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to kind of piece this all together um, we have our our bolts here I got to clean up a few of these on the wire wheel uh, it's handy to have the wire wheel if you can get a bench you know they're not that expensive but you can do maintain all your equipment with just that you can sharpen your blades with it and it also has the brush on the other side so you can clean up all the rust off the bolts because it's not going to get any better it's only going to get worse so that's how i look at things uh when i'm fixing them up you know i look at the condition of it and i kind of look into the future and say well a year or two from now how is this going to look you know if i leave it like this then the rust is going to penetrate the welds then the metal is going to break apart uh, so you want to protect the welds for sure but I'm gonna continue with this project we're almost done with it I'm gonna put all this stuff back together and uh, we'll close the video out Okay, so you can see we have it all done. Beautiful machine, it's in mint condition now. 
We put the side cover back on. The belt's in excellent shape. We have um, the auger is all done. Uh, it's going to be a good machine. Uh, basically, I'll be using this for the deck and also for cutting paths in the yard for my little dog because it's, the snow gets really high and he can't do his business out there. So we have, we got to take care of him there. You know, in the past, I would just shovel it, uh, but it gets a little cumbersome. Um, so this will be a great machine along with the snapper for doing those types of things. Uh, so I want to thank Brian again for contributing this one and of course the other ones that he contributed. It's been an incredible summer. You can see my little collection here uh, of snow blowers. We have the Toro 521 which was in pretty bad shape. We restored it. We have a 622 which I will be having a video soon of the total restoration of that which will include you know how to prep it, how to get all the rust off. Uh, it's a really thorough job. Priming, painting, um, and of course disassembling every component on it. Uh, you can see my collection here. Uh, it's been an incredible summer of working on all these things. Um, we're going to have more things to work on. Uh, we're going to get into some more things. But I want to thank uh, all of you, all the subscribers, and uh, helping me reach my goal. I'm hoping for I'll shoot for 5,000 subscribers. You know, 10 would be nice, uh, but we'll shoot for five for now. We have a du uh, some different material coming. Um, I'm excited about that. Um, we have uh, some snow coming, so we're going to be able to do a video where we uh, showcase how these machines are going to perform in the snow. Uh, so if you haven't already, subscribe. Please subscribe. Uh, hit the notification bell so you get alerts when I come up with new videos. Uh, of course, uh, like the video, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time.